not giving the opportunity. Somebody tells them, oh, flying is very risky and dangerous and so it's not good for women and they don't make better pilots. I see Patricia rising and continuing to lead as she does, but adding to some of her skill set and licenses. I know she'll end up in Ghana, but just how high she'll reach? I'm pretty sure you'll see her setting some world records before very long as well. The first heavier than air machine to fly made the brothers world famous overnight. Ever since the Wright brothers flew the first airplane in 1903, Aviation has been dominated by men. Clear! Prop. But there is a new face of flight. Many people who don't know me, my name is Patricia Mauli. Patricia is the first woman to be awarded Ghana's National Pilot's License and the only woman in the world to be a certified Rotax engine mechanic. That is a big credit to my country, of course, and to the youngsters who are looking up to me. In a day and age when female pilots are still a rarity, especially in the traditionally male-dominated societies of West Africa, 23-year-old Patricia has become somewhat of a local celebrity. Oh, are you proud, it wasn't. No, 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 no. Give it to somebody so we can take it at once. Only 6% of the world's pilots are women. I think, especially in my culture, because women are not given the opportunity. Somebody tells them, oh, flying is very risky and dangerous and so it's not good for women and they don't make better pilots. In Ghana, many people think women only belong to the kitchen or the house, looking after the children and fetching water and cooking for the family. But for me, I've always believed that a woman can go far than that. <laughs> it is my goal to change that perception because for something like that to change in a developing country, it takes somebody like me. It takes one. Born in 1988, Patricia grew up in Mepe, a small rural village 90 kilometers northeast of Ghana's capital city, Accra. I grew up in a community that is um, full of people who do farming, trading, fishing, and hunting. And usually our village is made up of mud huts and covered with thatched roof. There is no electricity. We fetch our water from the streams, so we basically walk like five miles to get to where the water is. We bring it into the house and sometimes you have to filter it and then boil it before drinking. I was originally brought up by my grandmother and other family members due to other difficulties. A lot of my growing up was done in Mepe with the family and then I left to do some of my schooling in Somenya. At boarding school, Patricia grew especially close to her English teacher, a relationship that has lasted over the years. The parents, at a certain point in time, they neglected her. Okay. So she would be worried. She would be worried. She would be crying. So I tell her, you shouldn't worry. I will take care of you. Don't worry. So how is the school these days? So when I was with my family, I thought life was supposed to be easy the whole time. And then I suddenly moved into boarding school where you had your seniors bullying you a little bit, like fetching water and washing all the dishes and stuff. And it was very different because there you learn to take responsibility, how to do things on time. Obviously, you're not getting that pampering like you got from your family. I always talk about this school to everybody. I tell them how wonderful the school is. It's nice to see people are making the effort to make the school oh, look oh, nice. They, they, are, they, 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 they are making it. Oh. Once again, hello to everybody. Hi. My name is Patricia Mauli Nyekoji Amanewe. And 
I attended school here. <laughs> and I went to school with the intention to become a journalist, sometimes a nurse. And the last thing I thought of before falling into love with airplanes was to become a soldier, to join the Air Force. Because to be able to get a job, you won't sit down all the time waiting for the job to come. You have to make that move. You when I went into the school, I was told the class for journalism is full, so the only option I had was to join the home economics class. But you know, I didn't lose hope, because I told myself, once it's a course that the school offers, it has to be important. So I didn't hesitate. I took the opportunity that came my way. The school is so we can get a job. Hmm? Right now, I have a job, but it's not just a job. I have a career for life. I was hardworking, but I was always very argumentative. <laughs> I was very troublesome. I would ask a lot of questions in school, so I was considered a very difficult student. Offering home economics means you have to buy a lot more in school, a lot more money to spend, and so every time when I come home, I try to help my parents by going to the bush to cut some trees for sales. It was a day when I went into the bush to cut trees. I saw these small planes flying overhead. It made me really happy, but I was scared at the same time. So I would run and hide from them. But then I was still enjoying looking at them. So curiosity, <laughs> I would hide as the planes pass by me. I would come out and see them again. And through that, I think as though I was scared, it still built some confidence in me, which it put some kind of energy or interest that told me, well, I need to go and find where these planes come from. For safety now, we're going to be going, we're going to be walking you down the line, we're going to show you. Jonathan Porter is the chief engineer at Pong Airfield and Patricia's boss. When Patricia walked out of the bush four and a half years ago, she didn't realise it, but she was about to change the way we operate. When we first set up the operation here at Pong Airfield, we never thought of employing women. And so we set the operation up around young men and we were training young men on different aspects. It wasn't going very well. I will admit it was tough. And then one day, Patricia literally walked across the airfield and said, can I have a job? My immediate reaction was, no, you're a girl. They told me they don't employ women. They told me basically there's no job for me. And I told them, I didn't want to work, I just want to be around the aeroplane, so what can I do? I was given a machete and a mattock to go and pull out three stems from the runway. She would look at it, she would analyse it, she would use logic, clear around it and lift it out. We had a girl who could dig trees. Cool. When I first came in, I was pulling out the tree stems, I didn't say, oh, this is not a job I want to do. But I embraced the situation. I enjoyed doing it. Then, one day, the young man in the workshops, I had just caught stealing. Looking around for somebody to help me, I saw Patricia there, cutting away at the long grasses. And in my usual rude manner, I called out, Oi, you! Come and give me a hand! And she came over and she took hold of the wing, and she was watching what I was doing. She then copied what I was doing. And when I went to her side of the aircraft, where she was holding, I was, who taught you to do this? She said, I watched you. And we carried on a little bit. I asked, have you worked on tractors? And no, she's just grown up in a rural community, typical hardworking girl. And so I said, well, let's give you a trial in the workshop. Okay, wait, 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 wait. She was walking eight kilometers to work each morning through the bush, and she was there early every day, absorbing everything she could just to be touching and working with the aeroplanes. 
that passion grew and grew and we put her onto an apprenticeship to work in the workshops. She started to learn how to, to build different parts of the plane, to make parts, to use files and drills and clicos and all the things that go into aircraft building. And a few weeks later, as she was learning, I was ferrying an aircraft from one place to another and I said, would you like to come along too? And she near enough bit my hand off with, yes! <laughs> and I strapped her into the plane and 50 feet off the ground I said, would you like to take the controls? And before I knew it, she had hold of everything. She had been watching me. She'd been watching the planes be built. She understood the systems. She had been studying hard and she flew and we didn't die, which was amazing. She did so well. And we came over, we landed, and she said to me, I want to learn to fly. Hey, the very first time I flew, I couldn't believe I was in the air. It was so different. Because from the air, everything looks so different. You have some kind of personal relationship with the machine you're flying. I was so thrilled and my eyes just pop open. After that, three minutes, free flight, I was thrilled. I wanted to become a pilot. I wanted to be with the planes. I thought it's where I belong. When she demonstrated her ability as a young African woman, not only to learn quickly, but to show dedication, strength and commitment, it started to change the way of thinking. We decided that we would sponsor her through her complete training, not only to do her engineering, but also as a pilot and then on to flying instructor. And very well invested it was too. With your right foot, you go in the plane like that. Okay. You stay outside, you see my whole body is hanging out. Uh -huh. With your left hand, you hold this side of the seat. Okay. Okay, and with your right hand, you hold the seat like this. Push yourself upwards. Okay. In before you lower yourself down. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You want to try that for me? Sure. Okay. From my training till getting the license, it took me six months. But it's six months of always being with the airplanes. Good man. So then get up. Let's uh, right step, hand step. holding that side of the seat. Yeah. I speak aeroplanes, I drank aeroplanes, I sleep with aeroplanes, and I did everything aeroplanes. Let it be zero. Then okay. when we are doing our power check, we'll This was the only reason why I made it in okay. such a short okay. time. Full and free movement. So basically... The All movement. studies have shown if you invest in a girl, you invest in a community. It stands for clearance and comms. Okay. Most boys are under a lot of pressure that if they are trained, they should go outside and earn more money. That same pressure is not on the girls. Genetically, women are understanding that if you have a baby, it takes a long time to turn that baby into a young, independent adult, usually 20 odd years. And so they can see the long term. At the age of 21, this young lady has learned to drive, she's learned to fly family didn't want to or couldn't support her financially to achieve her license. But she showed promise. She has invested herself. She has worked hard and it's been rewarded. Well done. Thank you very much. He did. Your husband is a pilot. <laughs> Take your time to get out there. Stay yep. right. Thanks. I will step on the tire. Yeah, I'll hold the plane so it doesn't move. Well done. That was the amazing impression. It's very nice. I told you. I told you. Flying makes people view the world in a much different manner. Uh -huh. I think women make good pilots, and let me say why. Women are much more smooth, 
and gentle. So we are cooking boiled rice and I can show you the rice where women follow recipe all the time cooking with hot fat and naked flames. When they come to flying, they apply the same skills that they use in the kitchen. Have you eaten palava sauce before? Oh, can you try it today? I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Um, it's very similar to flying. I will compare it much more to building. When you're building the fence, you read the drawing, then you interpret that drawing to drilling, marking out, everything has to be exact. So I believe because women are naturally fragile and handle things in a much more careful manner, I believe women make better pilot. We leave that on a little bit. And uh, so Patricia, how many people do you have to feed today? Twelve. Including yourselves. <laughs> so we're making this for you so you can eat some typical Ghanaian dish. So if we don't do this when we are flying, basically we can't communicate. Okay, so now that we've got the We took the decision, led by Patricia, to create the Avtech Academy, which is a joint venture by WASPs and Medicine on the Move, to select young women from rural Ghana and to train them to do the same sorts of things as Patricia and other things as well. So we go into the communities, we meet through the work we do, and if we see somebody who is able, somebody who has got that spark, we offer them to come to be trained. We want to translate what is basically saying. So we look at this long thing here, which we call the spark, starts from between here and, and then over there. Now when we take this little ribs, these are called the nose rib. I call them the future leaders of aviation, but they are basically in the Aftec Academy, which is the Aviation and Technology Academy. The spa we've already spoken about is basically bringing these young women who don't have the opportunity, who don't have the money, giving them the chance and exposing them to aviation. One, two, three. Um, click us out for me. From here? Uh, yeah. It's very nice to be able to teach my own colleagues and let me say my own sisters who are from this same country and they want to become like me so basically I'm a role model to them and it's such a pleasure to be able to teach these youngsters to fly too. That direction basically it's taking away the shafts so with, the, with what I've just taught you I want to do this direction for me. Okay. There is a saying that unity is strength, and I believe that if I teach other youngsters in Ghana, one day our country will be the leaders in aviation. I'm picking them at the correct sizes, okay? And so, Juliet, I want you to We have one disabled student, and we have another who, for family circumstances, needed something. And when you have that right combination, investing in them becomes a natural step. Now, I'm not going to say it's easy. We are incredibly underfunded for what we do. To train each one of these girls up from scratch to their end result over four years is an effective cost to us of $60,000 per student. Without the donations that come in here, without the customers who are here, without the girls who are being trained here, this whole thing collapses. There's a saying in aviation, if you wish to end up with a small fortune, you'd better begin with a large fortune. I have given birth to a lot of aeroplanes, building the planes, seeing them from scratch and putting them into reality and into the air. You have to have that soft touch. You have to have that love for the machine. You have to take care of it. You have to treat it like an egg. You know, eggs are very fragile. You have to handle it very carefully. So building that plane, seeing it from scratch, build up into flying, is more or less giving birth. And I have given birth to a lot of those already. 
I can honestly say that when she flies those planes, you can see the planes are happy. They are being loved and they love back. It's not just a job, it's a way of life. When we look at the Volta Basin, we see amazing communities. Most of the times when we are dropping to you, our focus is on the school fields because that gets the children excited, they are ready to learn more, they come out, they see the aeroplane, and that makes them happy. When I'm flying over your communities, I get really happy. Patricia is also a volunteer pilot for Medicine on the Move, a mobile healthcare company set up by Jonathan Porter in 2006 following a family tragedy. My son was involved in a very upsetting car accident. By the time I arrived, they'd got him into a bed and the hospital had run out of stitches. They didn't have splints. And he was in a pretty bad way, bones sticking out of him. And the doctor looked at me and said, Mr. Porter, what should we do? We haven't seen somebody with this many injuries who's still alive. We saved all his limbs and he's back to living and working fairly normally. Two days after this terrible accident, he looked at me and he said, Dad, we can't wait for the NGOs to reach the rural people. We have to do it. And Medicine on the Move was born. I'm a volunteer pilot engineer for Medicine on the Move. Medicine on the Move is responsible for taking health education into rural parts of Ghana, many communities that don't have any road access easily. We try to give them health education by air. One is the bottle drop and one is the bag drop. And this allows us to reach literally any community which doesn't have a road and we can take them communications medicines and other things, even vaccines. It is to encourage you to work hard. Thank you. When I fly over these communities that are so deprived, inaccessible, I feel something inside me, because I always believe that the future is not about me, it's not about my, my family, it's not about to this generation. I believe they are future generations. And those children who have bright eyes, who have great potential, I believe should be given the opportunities so that one day they can become the future leaders of our country. The most special day of the year for Patricia is Fly Me Day. Fly Me Days are special because this is when we bring different, different kids from all over the country, bring them into our field and give them short flights. For some of these kids, this is the first ever flight in their life and I don't think they'll get the chance to do it otherwise. Some of them, uh, they get filled with tears of joy because they have never imagined themselves to be doing something adventurous and, and fun before. We've heard about flying and of course in this part of the world everybody say flying is very challenging, you have to be rich, you have to be spectacular, you have to have a lot of experience, qualifications, degrees to be able to do it. But it's not what it's about, it's about people who have the passion, people who want to make the thing happen, people who want to fly, who want to, to have a different view from the air. And for these kids, Saying something like that means a lot to them. It was an awesome experience. I've learned the up and down pitching, how to own 
the engine and how the propeller propels. Patricia's been offered jobs all over the world. I certainly think we need to thank... She turns them down. Why? Because she wants to give back to her sisters what's been given to her. Now that is sustainability. She could leave here tomorrow, travel outside and multiply her earnings by 20, 30 times easily. But she chooses to make the sacrifice to stay here and to teach others to build and fly. a plan for building my own aerobatic plane where I'll be able to do loops the amazing thing people can't do. Oh gosh, <laughs> bon appetit then. I really want to set some good record having to do with aviation as far as flying is concerned. I see Patricia rising and continuing to lead as she does but adding to some of her skill set and licenses. You know what? She handled it beautifully with God and she told everybody it was wonderful. I think people don't understand. <laughs> Who knows where she'll end up? I know she'll end up in Ghana, but just how high she'll reach? I'm pretty sure you'll see her setting some world records before very long as well.